Let's take a look at the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics with TIPCO Spotfire. We're an oil well drilling and exploration company looking to optimize our well drilling times, as well as the efficiency of our assets, drilling rigs. We'd also like to avoid damaging events and costly maintenance that add significant costs to our operating budget. This is a heat map built in TIPCO Spotfire with a dataset created by the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics. The dataset covers several months of drilling operations with six drilling rigs that cover dozens of wells. On the y-axis we have hole depth, how deep we're drilling into the well. On the x-axis we have top drive RPM, or how fast we're running the engine on the rig. And the third axis, the coloration axis, is rate of penetration, which tells us how effectively we're drilling at that moment in time. Red values are poor, blue are average to good rate of penetration, and green are the maximum values in the data set. So let's take a deeper look at what this display is telling us. If we look, if we're running under two RPMs on the drilling rig, we see a lot of red ROP, which is to be expected. At other hole depths, we run the rig at various RPMs, but we seem to be getting average to good ROP. A particular area of interest is this region right here, where we seem to be running the rig at a very high RPM, but yet we have a lot of very poor ROP. This is something to be mindful of, and perhaps this is leading to damaging events to our assets that add significant costs to our operating budget. The interesting thing about BI tools like TIPCO Spotfire is the ability to slice and pivot on a row column formatted data set, which the integrator will produce. You can see slicers here on this display, and these slicers are from values in the Pi Data Archive, as well as context from Pi Asset Framework. So with a single click, if we wanted to see how the day shift performs compared to the night shift, or how one crew performs to another, we can. This heat map is against the same data set. We essentially changed our y-axis from hole depth to well ID and our x-axis from top drive RPM to crew. And now we can see how each of the crews performed when drilling each of the wells. On the right hand side we still have our slicers available so if we wish to drill down to a specific drilling rig we could do so. This is a Tableau display from the same data set to show you that data sets from the Pi integrator from Business Analytics are agnostic to the BI tool of your choice. Let's take a look at the Pi Asset Framework for this particular model. We have our Asset Framework hierarchy where we have six different drilling rigs and they were all built from a common rig template. That template has a variety of attributes including the manufacturer and model of the drilling rig, the well ID and well information as well as operational data on the drilling rig and metadata like crew shift information. Let's take a look at the workflow for the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics. There are three main steps to the workflow. First, we'll define the asset shape, which is identifying the column headers of the data set, as well as any asset instances we'd like to be part of the data set. Secondly, we're going to enhance the data set, and we can do this in a variety of ways. We can add time context, we can also add data and time filters, and we can also define the overall time range and sample interval of the data set before publishing to the target destination of our choice. Let's take a look at the workflow for the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics. We'll go ahead and create a new asset view and give it a name, and then it will take us to the data designer page where we can define our asset shape, which is essentially our column headings in our row column data set output. Our server is automatically populated with the default AF server, and we can go ahead and pick the AF database of choice, in this case, Petrolux. From there, we can traverse the AF hierarchy to find our assets of interest, in this case, our drilling rigs. There, we can see all of the AF attributes from the drilling rig listed in alphabetical order. If we wish, we can group them by category if it makes our searching easier for the attributes we care about. For now, we'll ungroup it and use this simple checkbox to bring all our attributes into the asset shape. On the right-hand side, you'll see the matches, just the one drilling rig from which we chose. However, in this data set, we want to have all of the instances of our drilling rigs. So why don't we go ahead and instead of filtering based on name, we'll filter based on the rig template. So any instance of a rig template in our AF hierarchy will be pulled into the data set. There we go. Now we're on the data preview screen, which will show us essentially what the integrator will create. 
but before we commit to creating it. Because in this screen, we can go ahead and add a variety of context to the data set. Time slicing context, uh, data filters, sample intervals, and the overall start and end time. So we'll go ahead and first pick the overall start and end time of many months of operational data. From there, let's add some additional time context. So in our BI tool, we may want to slice and dice based on year, month, day, hour. The Pi integrator, even though this is not Pi data, can add this context automatically into our row column data set. And you can see those columns being added to the data set here. Let's go ahead and add some data filters to the data set. First, we'll start with a numeric filter. Due to automation system glitches, we have some erroneous negative values for attributes that should never be negative, and we want to cleanse those from the data set. So for our whole depth, for our top drive RPM, and for our ROP parameters, we're going to create a rule to say, only give us those values when they're greater than or equal to zero. Furthermore, we can create a string filter. We have an attribute called well name state, and the value of this attribute is the well ID when we're drilling, and it's a string done, D-O-N-E, when we're not. And we'd like to filter out the data when we're not actually operating. So we can create a simple rule when the well name state does not equal to done, we would like those values. Great. There's also digital filters, event frame filters, and null value filters that you can add easily to the data set. We can go ahead and define the sample rate interval, which we can define any time period. We can go ahead and choose 10 seconds for now. If we wished, we could go against a non-fixed rate and choose a particular attribute and use the timestamps of that attribute to drive the timestamps in our overall data set. But for now, we'll go ahead with a clean 10 second sample rate. Okay, great. From there, we're ready to publish. And in the Business Intelligence Edition, we'll publish this to what we call a Pi View, where the data set will be stored in the, in the Pi system. We have our summary of six matching instances, our start and end time, and our 10 second interval. We can run this as a one time push, or if we wish to run it on a schedule, run the view, but then have it frequently update at a sample interval, in this case, every five minutes. For now, we'll publish it once. And this will take us to the main page where we can see a status bar on the progress of our data set output. Now that we've published the Pi view, let's go ahead and bring this data set into TIBCO Spotfire. So from the TIBCO Spotfire machine, we'll create an ODBC connection to the Pi integrator for business analytics using an ODBC driver specifically made for the Pi integrator for business analytics. We'll go ahead and configure the connection and test it. Okay, great, looks like it succeeded. And we'll go ahead and bring that data into TIPCO Spotfire. And we'll leverage the ODBC connection that we just created. From there, we can see the available Pi views and we'll select the one we just created, oil well drilling, and bring the data in. Great, now that we have the data, we'll go ahead and build that heat map that we saw in the beginning of this video. We'll go ahead and select the top drive RPM on the x-axis. Hole depth on the y. And ROP as the coloration axis. Tweak the color scheme. And let's go ahead and add some of those filters that we can slice and dice the data set with. And there you have it. 
so we're able to build large complex data sets with a simple drag and drop user interface with little to no knowledge of the control systems, all thanks to Pi Asset Framework and the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics, enabling our customers once again to spend less time aggregating and cleansing their process data and more time analyzing their data to gain deeper insights and awareness to ultimately improve their critical business operations.